Hey everyone, welcome to our first of three videos for our large July update this year. We've been working on this for a long time and I'm very excited, so let's just get right into the update. The reason it's taken us this long to do the update is gonna be apparent in these videos, you'll see exactly why, but as you've probably already seen, this update is gonna be coming out July 8th, so I'm really excited. So for now, we're gonna talk about what the whole project is about and specific aspects of the general project. But as we get into videos two and three, it'll get even more exciting. So make sure you stick around for those. So here I'm actually in a fake place. This is not actually the real update place. I just wanted to kind of throw you guys off because you'll see exactly the huge change as soon as I switch over right now. Here we are in the new menu of the game. So as you can clearly see here, there is a completely different interface and that is one of the main parts of this project. The entire user interface of every part of the game has been completely redone. So let's get into the different aspects of the new interface. So yes, as you can see right here, the news panel's title is the game overhaul, which is one of the largest updates we've ever made to the game. So the first thing I want to show, all the UI in the entire game has been completely redone. That includes the Rock and Coaster sound selection page and the Summer Bay room check-in and room controls. So the first page we'll look into is we'll just go to the park offerings. This just is a list of all the attractions currently in the park. This exists in the current menu. However, this page actually is made dynamically so we can easily add or remove things instantaneously without having to actually redo any of the user interface. So you'll see a lot of the changes we made here are autonomy. We do things now with data and then things are made on pages automatically so we don't have to actually have to go in and change the interface. We also have contributors which exists in the current game. It's just, you know, it's working with the new UI framework so you can see everyone who's worked on the project. We also have the news page, which again also exists, and this is made to work with the ride preview updates. So there's like a play button and a countdown, and it's all dynamic, just like how I said the other pages were. So it's very, very nice to be able to make things dynamically instead of having to actually modify UI. And then finally, we have updates in leaderboards. We can look at leaderboards really quick. Let's see if they've loaded. They haven't loaded yet. Some of them haven't. So yeah, you can click on different rides and see what the ride counts are. It shows you your ride count and it shows you everyone else. And you can, this is a testing place, so obviously this is just what we've written. And there you go. Finally, we have the updates log. This is so much cleaner than it used to be. You can see that this is the update I have not written yet for this one, but you can also see that this contains all the updates we've ever made to the game. Last but certainly not least is the new settings page. The features I'm about to show have been requested for a very long time, so we're excited to finally bring them to everyone. When you open the settings page, you have multiple options. You have controls, interface, audio, and other. Controls are just options for what you know keys you can set things to. So like if I wanted to open the backpack with a different key, I would just click it and press maybe, I don't know, R is my new key. And for, uh, for some reason, if I misclicked or something, I can press the reset button. So that's simple. That's how keybinds work. Uh, and if you have questions about what certain options are for or what they represent, you can hover over these or even click them for information on what that setting actually you know, changes for you. And now under the interface settings, we have multiple options. So this is actually a really nice one. In the game currently, you have the option to go regular color mode or dark mode, though the dark mode isn't really that good. It's kind of just makes everything less colorful, even if there, there's not really much color in the UI right now anyways, so it's kind of a lame setting. But this one is a full style selection system. So automatic just basically determines, like the game will determine what, what UI should look like based on where you are in the game. But you could also, you have a choice to choose whatever you want. So if you choose gray, you can see it changes all the UI automatically, right? Every single thing has changed. And then you can also do a dark mode, which automatically changes everything. So everything is completely handled on our side. And maybe in the future, we actually will add the ability to choose your own colors for every individual element. So that's something to look forward to in the future. This is a thing I'll show in more depth later in video two, probably. Uh, so yeah, they'll skip this one for now. The interface border size is 
a setting that controls the border of all the pages. So you can see there's like how there's, there's a blue, a darker blue border around this, and on the home page, there's like these borders around each of the images. You can choose to the size of the border if you don't want borders at all, or make them smaller. It's just a small customization option. Just thought it would be, you know, interesting. Next, we have the page badge notifications. Let's say you get a trade request. There'll be a red circle here with a number of requests that you've gotten. If you don't want to see those numbers or those badges of what we're calling them, you can just turn them off and then you won't see them anymore. Next, we have audio. This has been a highly requested feature by a lot of YouTubers, content creators, and just users. Pretty much everyone wants this. And so here's what we got. We have the option to control regular sounds and music completely separately and also just overall. So I have the music muted right now, but if I turn it on, you can hear the music in the background. And then the same thing, if I turn the music on, but I change the master volume, you can hear how it differs. So you have total control over all of those, which is really nice. You can hear my, all the sounds I'm making with the interface. If I turn the sounds down, can't hear them anymore. So you have total control over all of it. It's very nice. And this also goes into separate options for you to ch change. If you don't like licensed music or you want to upload a YouTube video with no chance to get claimed, you just turn this off and boom, there you go. And then same goes for all these things. You have total control. And specifically this one, because it's more unique, you can turn off ride vehicle sounds, such as the coaster roar on the track or launch sounds. So you have total control over that here. And then finally, we have this page, which has a bunch of fun options. So let's go into this. First of all, is a very important setting, strobe lighting. You can turn it off now, which is perfect for users who may suffer under strobe lighting conditions. So there you go, turn it off, boom. Nowhere in the game is there ever a strobe light now. And now we come into a more important thing that was promised when we first released weather was the ability to change weather how you wanted. And you have the option to choose between all these options, which I'll show here. In addition to that, you can also choose the automatic time, which is very, very cool because now you don't have to play in the game's time. You can choose whatever time of day you want by changing this slider and turning off automatic time. We also have texture render distance, which determines how far away you should be able to to see images and text in the 3D world. Uh, this is important for mobile devices. We don't wanna to have too much of it on the screen at one time. So making this smaller is obviously better. Makes your, your game run a little bit faster and use less memory. Uh, and if you increase it, yes, you can just see images and text further away, but it does come at the expense of the game running a little worse. So we're, at, you know, we're providing you the option, like all these settings are. And of course we have entrance indicators, which is a setting already, just now it's in the new UI. You can also disable and enable trading if you don't want to trade with other users. We have the same player customization options, except you also can choose if you want bubble chat enabled or not. You can change the name tags to show either display names or usernames if you want to you know, change that for whatever reason. And then you can turn off other players' name tags and you can turn off your own name tag if you want. And then finally, the first person ride camera. This is a very, very useful thing. And this was kind of promised also when we made the new ride POV earlier this year. Uh, you're able to change the field of view and you're able to lock the angle if you wanted to record a video. So both of those are really, really helpful to people. So I'm excited to finally have those in the game. So with that, that's the end of this developer update video. We have two more left and make sure you stay tuned for them. In the next one, we'll be going over a lot more and a really highly requested feature will be arriving here soon. So get ready, I'm very excited and I hope to see you guys in the next one.